from one amateur sewer to another, here's how you can make the CDC version of a cloth face mask. First thing you want to do before you cut out your material is to make sure that you iron it so it's nice and flat. Any wrinkles will make it difficult for you to cut out the shape you want. After you've ironed your fabric, one easy way to cut out the pattern is just to cut it out of a piece of paper first and then uh, use that to mark it on your fabric. I'm using a fabric marking uh, tool here, but you can use pretty much anything you want. Once you've marked your fabric, simply cut out the fabric to fit your pattern. For the CDC mask, you'll need two pieces, or if you want, you could do one piece that's 10 inches by 12 inches and simply fold it over. If you want to make a whole bunch of masks at once, you can just use a yardstick to uh, mark and cut out long strips of fabric that you then can cut to shape instead of uh, marking and cutting them one at a time. Now it's time to start sewing. Adjust your stitch length to about 12 stitches per inch and use this setting for the type of stitch you want to use. Here I have the two pieces of fabric I'm going to use. You'll see the good side is on top. What you want to do now is to take the good sides or the outsides and put them against each other so that the insides are facing out. Once you've done that, you can sew the long edges together. Once you've sewn the first long edge, then sew the other long edge. There's no need to backstitch on these edges at this point since uh, the short edges will be folded over anyway. Now it's back to the ironing board. You'll see the inside is on the outside or the bad sides are on the outside so now you're just going to open up the short edge turn it inside out now you'll want to iron these edges that will be puffed up now because you sewed them uh, inside out but you'll want to iron them down now so that they lay flat and then you'll go over this one more time and uh, do one more stitch there to hold that seam firm and steady. Now it's back to the sewing machine. As you can see, the stitching we did before is now on the inside and we're going to do one more stitch again right next to the long edge just to uh, hold that in place.
again, there's no need to backstitch on the ends of uh, this seam because the short ends will be folded over later. Now sew the seam on the other long side in the same way. Note that if you used one piece of fabric for this and folded it over, you'll still want to seam like this along the fold to hold it in place. Now it's back to the ironing board one more time. You'll see we have the seams on the top and the bottom of the mask finished. What you're going to do is fold over just maybe an eighth of an inch, iron that, and then fold one more time, maybe a half of an inch, and iron that so that you can form the little channel or tunnel that your elastic is going to go through on the sides of the mask. So that's the first little fold and then do a, a larger fold, maybe a half an inch or so. Little fold is now inside and iron that to form that tunnel and then we'll go back to the sewing machine. Now we're back at the sewing machine. You can see I've already sewed one end. I'm gonna sew the other end now. You'll notice that I start a little bit from the end of the mask, sew toward the end, back stitch, and then with the needle down, I'll turn it around. That just makes it a little easier when you have multiple layers of fabric like this to get it started without the fabric punching up. You're sewing right along the kind of inside edge of that folded over fabric to form your tunnel for your elastic. Make sure that you do backstitch the edges here. And again, if you need to, you can always turn it around to backstitch or sometimes if the fabric gets bunched up, just lifting up the foot a little bit uh, will help that. Because I wear glasses, I really like to have a metal or wire nose piece in there. So what I'm doing here is just taking um, a little piece of fabric that's already been folded over on itself and sewing that right along the very top seam. And what I'll do after I have this sewed in here is I will slide in a piece of pipe cleaner. So just sew along the very top seam, then with the needle down, you can lift up the foot, turn it, close off the end. And again, with the needle down, turn it, and then you can sew back to the beginning. Leave the one end open so that you can insert your metal. I use a pipe cleaner and that way you can also take it out for laundering or replace it as needed. Here we have the mask and I'm just going to cut about a four inch section of pipe cleaner. One of the things you want to make sure that you do is take the ends of the pipe cleaner and bend them over so that the sharp ends of the pipe cleaner won't stick out the ends of the little pocket there um, or stick through the fabric and poke you while you're wearing it. Then just slide the pipe cleaner in through that little pocket. There you go. Another way to get a pipe cleaner in your mask to fit snugly on the bridge of your nose is to actually sew it into the mask when you sew that seam on the long edge. So first just place it in there right up against the edge of the mask. And then you're, when you sew the seam, you're just going to sew right around the pipe cleaner. When you get to the pipe cleaner, you have to be a little careful, uh, but just push the fabric and the pipe cleaner over a little bit under one side of the foot and continue to sew right along next to it. 
So now you can see we have that pipe cleaner sewn right into the seam permanently. With the pipe cleaner sewn into the top of the mask, then it'll be easy to bend, so it will conform. Now it's time to insert the elastic. The CDC pattern says to use a six inch long piece of elastic, but that's way too short. Use an 11 inch long piece of elastic. I have uh, one 16th inch thick round elastic here. Uh, probably be better to use one eighth inch round elastic, but this is what I happen to have. Once you've threaded it through the end, tie it into a square knot. One end over and then the end that is sticking out more toward the back, then you tie over the front again. When you tie your square knot, it should look like an eight or infinity symbol. If it doesn't look like that, try again. And then do the other side. If you're having trouble tying the square knot, here it is again. Go ahead and just Google how to tie a square knot. Pull it through with about an inch uh, of extra sticking out either side and then you can tighten it up or loosen it up as needed for your face. Once you have them tied, go ahead and just pull on the elastic to get the knot inside the mask so it's not uh, sticking out against you. Here we have the finished product. Again, with that piece of pipe cleaner in the little sleeve in this version, you can bend that so it conforms around your nose nicely. Here's how it fits. If you don't have elastic or don't like it, you could use a shoelace. You could thread it through like this, or two shoelaces, one on each side, but then you'd have to sew them in the pocket in the middle. When you use the shoelaces, you just tie them in the back of your head, and it will fit like that. Happy sewing!